Hey guys, and welcome back to Scarlet Sprites. Today's video is going to be a little different than some of my other stuff. This one is unscripted, unrefined, and probably unpolished by the time I'm done editing this. But I was struggling a little bit to get some arcade projects that I'm working on complete, as well as get time in for gaming and some other video game related projects that I'm working on and do YouTube. So I decided just to kind of try and marry everything together. So if I'm working on some task that's related to any of that stuff, go ahead and film it, share it with you guys, see what you think. Might not be for everyone. If, if it's not and there's no interest in this, then I probably just will stop doing them. But today's topic is a real basic one. My Virtua Fighter arcade machine, when it would power up, it was playing blind sometimes, so there's no picture, but I could hear the game playing. It would eventually kick over two minutes, five minutes, ten minutes. Sometimes it would kick over and then you'd have a picture and you'd be able to play. Sometimes the screen would be dark. Obviously, any way you cut this, there's an issue with the monitor. And that's just not something that I'm real good at diagnosing. And a silver bullet that people usually toss out is to recap the monitor chassis. And that always usually does seem to be a really good idea with most electronics. I'm not great at soldering, so given all of this, I decided to enlist some professional help. I had Chad recommended to me from ArcadeCup.com as the true wizard of arcade monitors. So I pulled the board, sent it off to him. That came back in the mail today, and I'm gonna go ahead, open it up, share what it looks like with you guys. We'll put it back inside Virtua Fighter. Hopefully I flip the switch and it comes up and we've got a gorgeous picture. I don't know what's gonna happen, but uh, this is just a day in the life of Scarlet Sprites. One of Chad's tags is keep them running, which is reference to obviously the CRTs. You, you want that in an arcade machine. A, a genuine, authentic arcade machine contains a CRT. Now, obviously there's a lot of sensitive parts here, so this needs to be packed really well. And, I mean, Chad's obviously the master, he does this for a living, so if you were ever wondering how you should pack the monitor chassis to be shipped, um, this is your guy right here, so... Looks like the bulk of it. I don't think the rest of this is all just padding, which we can kind of set aside for now. Got some documentation here. Right across the top, you see all the capacitors that he replaced on the chassis. And then further down, the other components, including the potentiometer that he checked. You know, checking voltages and, and just kind of going back over everything. At the bottom here is really, you know, I, I don't want to speak for him and I'm no expert, but I would think outside of replacing the capacitors, some of this other work at the bottom is really getting into the weeds. And it's, again, it's stuff that I'm not gonna be able to diagnose on my own. I'm just not that good at it. But he's reworking some of the solder pads. He's he's cleaning up the board, reflowing solder. And he's got some general cleaning and you know solder joint failure analysis going back through, looking at all that. I mean, this board is probably as good as it's ever going to be without you know fully replacing it with something that was new old stock, if you were lucky enough to even find that. So that's gonna actually what is going to connect back to our monitor tube. You can see those little prongs. Set those back inside. Um, and this is uh, the neck board that's wrapped up. Looks like there's a new cap has been applied to this. Uh, I do remember the bottom of this thing had some corrosion. I don't know if he was able to fix that or, or would even fix that, but take a look here. Yeah, I gotta say, wow. This looks really good. Again, I wish I had a before shot of this, this board. The bottom of it was, um, it almost looked like rust. Uh, maybe some of it was, but it was definitely corroded. It's all cleaned up. He cleaned this whole thing up. Looks like he definitely touched up the solder points in the bottom. This is, this is really pretty remarkable. I'm pretty impressed with this. I mean, I've got, uh, I've got nothing but high expectations for plugging this back in at this point. All right, let's go do that. All right, so here's our guy. This could be a little challenging because I gotta wedge myself back behind the wall to get the board back in and somehow figure out how to get the camera back there with me. So this could be fun. All right, one other thing I'm gonna do is connect 
alligator clip here. Just kind of make sure that it's been a while, but I want to make sure this thing is fully discharged before I start fooling around with components. The monitor, uh, the arcade machine is unplugged, of course. So. All right, I think we're good to go there. That's pretty much it here for getting this hooked back up. I'm gonna go down here and flick the switch. No abnormal sounds. You can hear the game running, which is good because this has been off for a while while the board's been out. It looks good over here. Don't smell anything, which is good. Turn the light off. You can see the glow of the neck tube or not. A little bit there. You can see that orange in the glass. Let's go ahead and check out the picture out front. All right, well, the picture is gorgeous. I don't think I could have expected it to turn out this good. The colors, everything is vibrant, bright. Uh, I did do a little bit of an adjustment on this. The picture was scrolling a little bit, but that wasn't anything with the, the board work. That's just, um, you know, the chassis having to be connected to my tube and be configured a little bit. So these are the settings I was talking about. You can see underneath here we've got the red, green, and blue bias settings which will increase or decrease those respective colors in the picture. We've got a brightness switch and then the horizontal and vertical adjustments as well. Just a, a little bit of a pain to take this off of the front just to adjust this but it should be a one-time thing and we're, we're done. And that is Virtua Fighter, guys. New chassis installed. I have to think that this thing looks as good as it did the day it came off the line. Thanks to Chad at ArcadeCup.com. I can't recommend him enough at this point. Very pleased with the work, and I'm very thankful that he has my Virtua Racing chassis as well. I'm probably going to pull the Astro City and Blast City and get those over to him because I want to make sure these things run for the next 15, 20 years. As always, thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I will catch you all next time. Later, guys.